Hello, welcome to my bench. Today I'm going to um, try to explain how um, local oscillator injection works and give you um, some idea uh, with a practical example uh, using a couple of uh, frequency generators and um, and some audio. First of all, though, we'll go through this, and I'll, I'll try to explain how this actually, what it looks like on a, on a sort of a, a quick schematic. Basically, you have an antenna that comes down, and that antenna will go into a variable capacitor. That variable capacitor will come out. Um, this is a very basic uh, description of how it works. To an amplifier of some sort that uh, for for a, freq a frequency, which we'll get to in a minute, that amplifier goes out to another amplifier that goes out to um, an AF amplifier. This one is not an amplifier, it's a detector to AF to your speaker. That's the simplest that, that you get. Well, in the old days, what they used to do is they used to take this, uh, the antenna coming in, they would tune this to the RF frequency of the AM radio station. This pretty much works on AM, what, that's where we're sticking with now, um, and tune it to exactly that frequency, amplify it, detect it, and amplify for audio. Well, that works okay, but it takes a lot of signal and a lot of amplification, a lot of steps uh, of um, bandpass filters and all that kind of stuff in, in between here uh, to separate out an individual frequency. The more steps you had... Um, in your uh, pass filters in this area, the better your receiver would be. And that was way back when, when they first started. Well, then they came along and decided, you know what, if we took a signal and injected it right here, we could come up with the sum... <clears throat> or difference between the frequency that you want that you want to tune in and the amplification that you're going to need here and be able to separate out much easier um, the exact frequency you want well as by convention and I don't know exactly whose convention but they ended up with 455 kilohertz um, selecting that now that was at one time that was patented uh, so some radios will be 465 so there's you know a meg one point something megahertz there's, there's lots of them out there but the the main the main standard is 455 kilohertz so in order to come up with that 455 kilohertz which was easy to work with all the way down here you didn't need all of the uh, filtering that you would have in the old days here, what they did is they took what they called an LO, local oscillator, and they injected the local oscillator into here. Now the way they got that is you have another capacitor which is tied to this capacitor up here. These are air variable caps, uh, you know, bread slicers, they call them. And that uh, capacitor would tune to a frequency along with this. These two are tied together. So if you turn one, you turn, turn them both. Well, what they decided to get 455, let's say you want to listen to 920 kilohertz. Well, you got nine. You tune this capacitor to 920 kilohertz, and this one goes along with it. And in order to get 455, 
This one would tune an oscillator. We'll, uh, we'll just make this an oscillator here. Okay. Would tune an oscillator to 1,000 or 1,375,000. Okay. So 1,375 kilohertz or 1.375 megahertz. All right. So when you inject that 1,375 hertz at this point here, you get a combination of 920 kilohertz and 1,375 megahertz. Well, if you take that... Um, you end up with product of 455 kilohertz on the low side plus some on the high side because this will add and it will subtract. So you end up with one of the products at 455 kilohertz and that's what we're going to do today. Only we're, we're going to make the simplest AM radio that you can make with a couple of things on the bench. So, that's the way it works. So what I want to show you here is if we bring up the spectrum analyzer, give it a second. There's my spectrum analyzer. I have 920 kilohertz, which is um, up there at the right-hand side of the... Uh, of the... Uh, right there. 920 kilohertz at that peak, and the one on the far left-hand side is zero because I've got a um, span right now of 1.5 megahertz. So that other uh, peak there, it says minus 2.5 kilohertz. That's Don't pay any attention to that one, okay? What we want is that 920. <clears throat> now, what I'm going to do is I've got this hooked up. Uh, I'll show you a picture here. I've got it hooked up for 920 kilohertz coming in off of my uh, communication service monitor. Here's a picture. And I've got 1,375 hertz coming out of my Fluke signal generator. Uh, Fluke 6060 AAN running about 1.9 volts. This takes a fair amount of uh, of input uh, out of these guys because this is, I mean, just stuff. I mean, it, I'm just throwing things together on the bench. So let's inject. What we're going to do is we are going to inject um, at this point right here, the 1,375 kilo or hertz or, or 1 megahertz, 1.375 megahertz, with this up here, the antenna is not there. It's actually, this is the um, communications, communications um, generator. So, let's get this guy back up. And... We'll turn on the um, 1.375 megahertz. Now, we've got right there, if you see, we're on right on 455 kilohertz because we injected that 300 or 1, 1 megahertz, 1 1.3 megahertz. We'll take it away and we'll put it back in. So, what we're doing is we are getting a sub of the, um, well, a product, negative product of uh, 920 kilohertz and 1.375. So let's set the um, spectrum analyzer up, turn on the detector, peak is good, and turn on the DMOD, and we will turn the dwell up on this one the dwell is how long it'll stay <laughs> so you can hear it and at this point you don't hear anything because I'm not putting any audio into it 
the um, it'll sit there for 10 seconds and you'll hear the sound for 10 seconds and then it'll sweep again and pick it up so let's uh, let's put some internal AM about 80 percent 80 percent injection of AM there you go now you can hear it take it down to 400 there's 400 what you're hearing is the spectrum analyzer uh, detector hearing the audio. So I'm sitting on 455 kilohertz, and I'm hearing the audio out of the uh, spectrum analyzer. Well, I'll tell you what, why don't we turn that off, and I'll put in an external audio source just from a radio here. Here's a picture of that. And see if we can hear anything out of that. There we go. You can't barely hear that. Pretty low. But there it is. I'm listening to what's coming out of the, the little radio going into the external modulation. I can't drive it hard enough. It says right on there, external slow. But you can hear it. Well... That's nice if you got a spectrum analyzer, but what about if you don't happen to have a spectrum analyzer? Well, tell you what, let's take it out of the spectrum analyzer. This is what I've got here. I've got this, this end is coming out of the communications service monitor, 920 kilohertz. This end is coming from the um, Fluke. Uh, signal generator at 1.375 megahertz and I've got this little guy which is a SDR radio so let us bring up the SDR this is SDR sharp and it's running right now and we're going to plug this into the low end of here and what do you got Look at that. You've got right at 455 kilohertz. You've got a nice big peak um, with a bunch of bouncing around, which would be your <laughs> your signal. Well, let's turn on the uh, speakers. Now, it sounds horrible because, you know, I'm just doing this raw, but... What this is trying, what I'm trying to show you here, is slow down. Okay, there we go. I get confused because I have to use the mouse up on the top here, not on the bottom. Uh, but so if you've got a twenty dollar or fifteen, twenty dollar, thirty dollar SCR or SDR software defined radio, <coughs> you've got what is basically a spectrum analyzer. And you can use that. You could use this to you know, trace inside of radios, whatever you wanted to do. Right here, we are basically, we're uh, listening to the 455 kilohertz product of the injection in 920. So that's what I wanted to show you. Uh, that's, that's how uh, injection works. Uh, you know, local oscillator injection into the frequency, and uh, that's that's how radio AM radio works. So, if you got any questions on this, go ahead and ask, and maybe we can do some more experiments. But I just wanted to show you that. But we got something else we need to do. Let's get this out of the way. Today is Thursday, and. We have a drawing. <laughs> uh, last week, I uh, put up a video giving away a um, this guy right here. I want to turn this off. Let's see. Uh, detector off. Okay giving away this. We went through it. We found out how well it worked, which was very well. 
and I asked if anybody wanted it. Well, we ended up with 10 folks, 10 people that wanted this um, digital multimeter, Fluke digital multimeter. It's a 8012A. And I have all of that in my Maxwell House Smooth Bold, which is what I like. And there, everybody's got a name. There's 10 of them in there. And we're going to do this. Mix them all up. I'm going to hold this away from me so I cannot see what I'm doing. And I'm going to reach around and pull out one. There's one right there. Just one. I wrote them all on post-it notes. So, let's see who won the, uh, the fluke. Open it up. Daniel Davis. Daniel Davis won the fluke. So, if you get a hold of me at AERVblog dot com. Email me at aervblog dot com with your pertinent information. We'll get this thing out to you. Congratulations, Daniel. I hope you enjoy it. It is a nice little, nice little meter. You can see, battery still works. <laughs> Does charge. So, anyway, Daniel Davis, give me a, give me an email at aervblog dot com. Hey, thanks for watching, guys, and. Uh, We'll do some more stuff later. Till next time.